Hi guys, I'm gonna demonstrate the repair of a, this is a Bose Wave System. Uh, this particular model is the AWR CC1. A ton of these had it, the white ones, the black ones, um, they're all pretty much the same issue. Uh, you'll find that, so this one, if I get the screen in there, you try to press FM mode, Oh wow, this one worked. Ten minutes ago it did not work. Um, we'll go to CD mode. Try to put the CD in. It just shuts off. Will it go back to radio now? Press the radio button. Now it's... Oh, it is going to try to work. Of course it does. Uh, so other issues might be that you try to press the radio button and you can see when you press the remote button this little green dot down here comes on to show you that it's receiving a, radio, a remote signal. Um, if that doesn't come on then um, you may have other problems but so I can change you know, when I go to CD. Uh, most common complaint on this is the, the people the CD gets stuck or it goes in, it plays one track, and then it stops. Um, as soon as I turn the video on, of course it works. Uh, but the, the issue is intermittent. It's like it doesn't do anything, it just forgets. When to CD, screen shuts off, it's gonna try again, it'll go through a couple times, it spits the CD out. It has all sorts of issues, right? It doesn't work. Um, the other one I just worked on, when you press radio mode, it goes to just, the screen never changes. It says, please wait, please wait, please wait. Nothing ever happens. So, first we need to disassemble the unit. One, two, three, four, five screws here. Handy dandy magnetic tray. Take this comes straight up off the top and there's almost on all of these these foam stuff comes apart so good luck with that uh, let's see these wires go to the speakers and they are held in here with a clip so what I do is I get my little screwdriver and I pop that clip open and then just pull them out. This is the clip that you're opening right there. Each clip is on the opposite side. You should be able to see that. This one's a little more of a pain. Okay. And then I like to take the transformer off with the sound unit, pop that clip. This last one is a little harder to get. You have to lift this up and then unclip this last one and undo that. Now be careful that you don't just lift this off because we're not done yet. On this side, under here, there's a ribbon cable. We're gonna unclip this. Just pull straight out, but be careful that you don't uh, bend the cable or rip it. Um, they can get really sensitive right here on the edges. Just be careful with them. Set this aside. Uh, we've got a couple of cables holding. So this will lift, just lift straight up, but be very careful. There's a very short ribbon cable underneath that is easy to damage. We can go ahead and un can remove this. Um, I just remember that the 45 side is gonna go up to the display. And then this comes off. There's a cable on the side here. 
And then this ribbon cable, if you lift this up, you can see this ribbon cable here. Be extra careful to get it out. And then this comes off. Set that aside. Uh, this cable is going to come off. Take it off. I take it off from this side. That leaves this board free. That's the board that we are trying to get to. Uh, there's two screws here that hold this in. These screws are the shorter ones versus these ones are the case screws. This comes out. I've seen people replace all of these capacitors. Um, I haven't needed to do that. I think it's a lot of work and pro possibly unnecessary. So we're just going to focus on this board. There's four clips on each side for, what is that, the bottom? This is a, just a shielding cover. You'll want to replace these when you're done. Uh, this one has clips here, here, all around. These are really clips. These are the clips here. You can see there's a little, a little notch in there and there. So you just want to use your screwdriver or some other device. Be careful not to damage the board and open that up so it comes up just far enough. You can get the next one off. Probably help if I started on this side. Just get that up and moving. And then that comes off. The one, no, oh, anyway. Don't forget which one's top and bottom. I replaced all of these um, except for this one microfarad. Which one is it? This is the one microfarad here. I didn't replace this one and I didn't replace this 10. Um, honestly, if you're there, go for it. They're only an extra, what, couple, maybe a dollar or so while you're doing it. Um, I have here a 220 microfarad, and this is a 16 volt. All right, so this is the 220 16, and then we've got, this is, uh, looks like a 47 6.3. Microfarad, 6.3 volts. We're gonna mark that as a one and one. Got a 10 microfarad, 16 volts. And there's one, there's a, another one of those. This is a 22 microfarad. 16 volt. This is also a 22, so we'll mark an extra one of those. I've got a 100 microfarad, 6.3 volts. Over here, that's the one. We've got a 47 6.3. N16 This is a 47 So 47 this one says uh, there's a 32A uh, Is it a 32 or a J? It's a it's a J so the J code means 6.3 volts So 47, 6.3, we'll add another one there and another one there. I'm not sure why they do this, but this one is a 6.3, this one's 6.3, this one says 6.3, this one uses the J for the code. Uh, 33, over here, the, this is a 33 microfarad, 10 volt. And then we've got a 4716. I'm going to add an extra notch here 
for the 47.6.3 because we're going to end up getting 47.16s for all of these just because that's what I have available. So let's double check. 147.16, 3310, 47, 47, 47, 3, 10. That's the one. Uh, I don't gonna mess with this 10 down here either. Uh, we've got a hundred. A 10, a 10, there's the other two 10s. A 22 and a 22, there's the two. And that last 47. Okay. I'm gonna go get those parts. I'm gonna start with this 220 over here. I'm gonna use, I'm using some flux that was recommended to me by, um, what is his name, Lewis Rossman. This is the one off of his videos. I've used some other stuff too, but I thought I'd buy a tube of this just to see how it works. Um, Seems like regular flux to me, so I'm just going to put a little dab on each of the corners or sides of this, all of these capacitors that we're going to desolder. Try not to get it everywhere. start with that for now and then what I do for this is I don't mess with desoldering them I just take let's see right in the center of the screen there I'll just put the iron right here on this leg and sort of lift up on them and they they come just a little ways and I go to the other side Let's get them to go a little bit, each side at a time. One side will lift up like that, you know you've gotten that side off. See how it's kind of angled. Just touch on them with that soldering iron. Be patient with it. The thing you don't want to do, oh and then also take a check on the the side with the black, that's going to be your negative side. Um, they also have, let's see if I can zoom in on this, on the board. You can see right here this little white mark. That's also denotes the negative side. It gets kind of difficult to see on some of these because they make the mark much smaller. But uh, yeah, we're going to do that. Oh, another little handy thing to do is take a quick picture of this before you take the capacitors off so that you know which one goes where and the orientations. Um, or just do them one at a time like I'm going to do. So that was our 220. There's a 220.16. I have a 220.16 here. Um, it's obviously not a surface mount, but that's okay. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to bend these leads. Go right here. Make them just a little bit long. And I'm going to solder this like this so that it folds back onto itself. Oh. Another thing that's helpful to do is, if you can see, I need to keep this in the center, huh? Uh, so if you can see, there's not a lot of solder on here. I'm just going to add just a little extra so there's a nice little bubble. See how it's kind of, it's kind of bubbled and rounded.
Let's get them soldered in there. And then I take this one on this side. I'm just gonna fold it back around onto itself. So it sits on there nicely. It's kind of tucked in out of the way. Pretty much flush. And I got the negative side on the negative pad. And that's pretty much the technique that I use for these. Um, it helps to have a little bit of solder on the end of your on the end of your iron. What you really want to avoid is just yanking on this too hard because if you pull too hard and you you'll rip the uh, the copper that's attached to the board, you just rip that right off and then you're pretty much done. That's that's uh, pretty hard to fix that. It is possible, but it's pretty hard to fix it. So just have some patience, go nice and easy. Don't pull super hard. And that was a 47, 6.3, negative on that side. That's gonna be one of these. And I'm just replacing this with a, a 47, 16. The capacitance needs to be the same, but the voltage can be higher, not lower. Let's go ahead and clean this little spot up here. We've got a little zoomer in further. Just want plenty of solder in there. So this one I'm gonna lay this so sort of like in here like so. Like this way. So that they're kind of angled flat like that. Trim the excess off so it doesn't fly everywhere. Bring these up just a little bit. Probably can't see it. I'll get my hands out of the way. See, I just have those leads soldered in there. This lay, there's a little white bar right here to denote the negative side, and that's the negative side there. And repeat this process for the rest of them. It gets a little spacious, anti spacious in here. It's a little anti spacious in here, so um, get creative. <laughs> This up really quick so you can get a good look. All right, this one's next. This is a twenty-two six point three.
Be real careful, try not to get the soldering iron to touch other stuff that you don't want to melt. This is a 22 microfarad 25 volt. The one we took out was a 2216. That's just the smallest one that I could get easily. Let's add a little extra solder. I'm out of solder. So, in case you all are wondering, I am using it's RA Flux, it's 22 gauge. Uh, this is a 6337. The 6337 is supposed to be a little bit better. It's supposed to be a little bit better for uh, circuit boards. Um, I personally try to shoot for the RA flux just because um, I think it's a little bit stronger. And if I'm ever working with dirty materials or um, it doesn't, the solder doesn't want to move really well. I'd rather have a little bit stronger flux. And the 22 gauge just seems to be a pretty good size. Trim that, make sure that the polarity is correct. So I can do this with my left hand. Sometimes the tweezers help get things into place. It sits down real nice, and those all sit pretty flat. It should be just okay. The CD, the CD uh, drive sits pretty high above this, so you have a little bit of room if they're not super flat. The shielding will probably go back on no problem. If it sits up just a tiny bit, it's all right. Sometimes I even leave the shielding off if yours sits too high and it doesn't fit. Um, it's probably fine. Now for this 100 microfarad over here. So I'm just I'm just heating this pad up over here. The surface mount pad. I'm just applying a little bit of pressure to the side of it to try to get it to lift up. And once it comes up just a little tiny bit, then I move to the other side and just keep working it back and forth until it comes off. Being very careful not to pull too hard. It doesn't take very much force at all. The amount of force that you're trying to take is you're just trying to bend those little tiny wires. That's all you're lifting, you know, when you desolder it, it's going to lift up just a little bit and you're just going to rotate that wire. So you're not, they're not glued on, they're not stuck down. So that one was a 6.3 volt, the lowest one I could find was a 16 volt again. Um, you can go up in voltage. These are also uh, 105, so I show you this. They're 105 degrees Celsius rated, which is way overkill for this. 
I think really all that's happened with these is they've they've just gotten old, uh, and the the um, electrolytic material inside the capacitors has just gotten uh, has just gone bad. Okay, that's got the little white bar there. Just gonna bend these so that they'll fit. Take a quick look at the inside first. I guess in hindsight, I didn't need to take the bottom one off, huh? There's some junk in there. There's a little bit of gunk. I've seen where bugs have crawled into here and they, they like the, I don't know, the warmth or something, so um, that happened as well. Now we get this side. This side is, is probably a little easier to get these off, but um, a little more of a pain to get the, the non-surface mount capacitors, whoops, the non-surface mount capacitors to lay in there. One of the things that I can do is take a picture of this with my phone. Always review your picture to make sure that you can read everything that you need to be able to read. 47, 47, 6.3, there's the one with the J. Oh, my pen marking is on there. Um, there's a 10, 47, that's the one that I'm not going to be replacing because I'm out of the 1 microfarads. And I just did one like this and it didn't seem to be a problem. So we're going to go with that. Now I'm going to refer back to my picture and start with I'm going to start with this 1016 here which is this one right here this pad and this pad Because this one will fit. No, we're going to start with this one over here. This is the one to start with. And that is our 4.7. Sorry, 47. There is no 4.7. It's a 47. I'll try that instead. Because this one can fit if you stick that right there. We can do the thing where we tack it down like this and then roll it over.
Don't want too much of the the capacitor leads to overhang. I just don't want them to get. I don't want them to touch anything they shouldn't be touching. shoot everywhere hmm. I made them a little short none the matter I have tools for that so I've got these pair of flat pliers I'll just bend them out a little more No, oh, they're very short. Can I get it in over there? It's just fine. That'll be, it's just out of the way enough. Sort of sitting on top of there. I did make those a little bit short so it doesn't sit down super low, but it's still plenty low enough to fit under there. And then you can still get that ribbon cable in. Uh, these two we've got are both 47s. Seven sixteen, and they'll both sit. Uh, if you set this one this way, it'll fit out of the way pretty nice, but we have a screw that goes in here. So what I've done before is I've put these in, you know, with a little extra room, and then bend them up, put the screw in, and then just bend it over the top of the screw so it's going to sit, you know, like, so if I were to bend this, you know, so it's pretty far, I've got a lot of extra room. That way I can kind of bend it up out of the way. See if I if I leave set that like so, it's gonna have a lot of room. And I have a lot of room. Let's get on the right pads here. Now, in order to get that screw in, I can bend this up out of the way. I can get that screw in there, and then I can bend it back over the screw when I'm ready. All right, for the last one, forty-seven sixteen. I'm going to set this one kind of offset a little bit so I don't get in the way of those other legs over here. Look at that. Hmm. Last solder joint's not great. It's almost in the way. 
of that screw. But it should work just fine. We should be able to get that screw in and then screw that back down and then kind of bend those over. All right, let's get it back together. I love how it says do not reuse, so uh, make sure that you don't reuse those. Stick that back on. This back in here, reattach this. Okay. Got a plug back in. This one underneath is kind of a pain to get plugged in. sure it snaps this one gets plugged in and then you can set the speaker case back in place and I usually am able to get these the speaker wires plugged back in just from up here and this little screwdriver pop that back in place it's all this dust that always comes apart anti-rattling foam I think okay Now it plays the CDs. I think this is some random go all the way to track. Make sure it can seek. Uh, back to stereo. Volume up. Then I always eject the disc a couple times just so you can make sure that it's not having that hiccup with the disc because sometimes it would suck the disc in, it would get halfway and it would spit it back out. Um, try it a few times. But it should be fixed now just with those capacitors. 
um, that that should take care of it. And then of course reassembly is pretty straightforward and easy. This is my tester disc. Um, let me show you the assembly really fast. It's just the reverse order. It's just those what five screws or so. Back on. Sometimes these plastic screws don't find the same threads they went in. They try to cut new threads and it doesn't go in super great. Like that. That is the Bose repair for the Bose Wave Music System model AWRCC1.